We're back, and now we're joined by Yvonne Jones, MP for Labrador. Ms. Jones, you're on the air. Good morning, Bill. How are you doing? Fine. Nice to hear from you, Yvonne. Oh, always. L- Listen, uh, it's always good to talk to you, crowd, down at BOCM. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. Well, well, we enjoy we enjoy talking to feisty politicians, too. <laughs> and I think you know what category you fall into. <laughs> yeah, well, I was pretty feisty yesterday, I yeah. can tell you that. Yeah, I heard, I heard I, that. Yeah, I uh, listened to um, the Premier's comments that was on CBC. And I actually went and listened to it a couple of times, and I was looking for the direct quote now when I was waiting for you on the line, so mm. I could read it to you. But basically, um, her her reference to owning Labrador is not only incited me, but it's incited a lot of people across Labrador. Mm. And just a very bad choice of words in referencing an area of the province that have felt uh, neglected by uh, Newfoundland for a very long time. Yvonne, are you willing to say, well, the Premier, you know, I know she's in a different party and any opportunity uh, to be partisan is part of the political process. I'm not blaming anyone for that, don't uh, believe me. But are you prepared to say, well, the Premier misspoke herself. What she meant to say was that Newfoundland and Labrador as a province owns Labrador. Newfoundland and Labrador as a province owns Newfoundland. That's our territory as a province. Uh, That's what she meant to say and she misspoke herself are you willing to concede that or do you think uh, it, it, it you think it's a mindset her. there yeah maybe i would if i heard it from her but i haven't heard that from her oh, okay uh, that that's your view of what she intended to say she's never clarified what she intended to say okay um you know she said what she said and what she said was disrespectful it was without acknowledging the sediment that exists in labrador it was out, without acknowledging and understanding the history of how Labradorians feel about who we are. Mm. I mean, we're people, uh, Bill, you've got to remember that we're people who live in a precious part of this province and country, a mm. place that we love, our home. And you look at our history of where we were trying to be sold to the highest bidder, mm. you know, in this country by Newfoundland. Yeah. That's right. You know, that's our history. They were at one point willing to take as low as, you know, $65 million. Yeah, that's right. For the sale of Labrador. Right. And, and, know, and that's the history that we've lived with. I grew up being bred into a culture uh, that was taught that from a very early, early age. Um, you know, that we are actually a part of an entity that did not want us. Yeah. So over the years, through a lot of work of a lot of people, we've tried to bridge that gap between Newfoundland and Labrador. Mm. We've tried to do what was seen to be the right thing in being inclusive and in being one province. And, you know, then you hear the premier of that province come out and talk about owning us as if we were a commodity, mm. as, as if we were something that, you know, we own you, we take from you what we want, we tell you what we want. And you know something? When those words come from a premier of the province, at the same time that she's contemplating right now, giving 51% of the power coming out of a project in Labrador to Nova Scotia for sale at spot market prices, as opposed to keeping it in Labrador for industry, you really got to put those contexts of her words in, in, um, in, um, Okay, make sure I understand what's happening today. Yeah, I make sure I understand, and our listening audience understands that I'm gathering uh, from you uh, that uh, it's uh, a mindset of the premiers and maybe the governments uh, that uh, Labrador is a colony of Newfoundland. Newfoundland is the entity, and Labrador is a colony. That's the mindset, and that Labrador exists as a colony, uh, like uh, historically all colonies, to be exploited and ravaged for its resources to the benefit of the homeland. That's the that's what the message you're getting when the Premier says that. Absolutely. And the common terminology that you'll hear throughout Labrador in all walks of life, from the top business people in Labrador to the very uh, people who are, you know, out there just working within the public service or whatever the case may be, everybody's job is important. But what I'm saying is that in all walks of life throughout Labrador, you will hear the reference as a warehouse, that Labrador is the warehouse mm. for the province. And, and 
you know, so when you get a premier who's kind of, you know, sewing up that mentality of thinking as well, yeah. you know, by her comments, it's not good. Yeah. It's not good. It's offensive. It, it, it really puts uh, us in the position of where many people think we are in relation to Newfoundland and Labrador as a province. And, and I don't like that. And if she meant something else by it, well, by all means, okay. clarify it. Okay, get on. But, but that has not happened to date. Okay, but she's certainly welcome to get on and clarify it if she, if she wants to. You mentioned history, and history cuts both ways. I mean, we also had to remember that Newfoundland, as a people, uh, went to uh, court, went over to the Privy Council in England and fought like dogs to uh, make sure that Labrador remained part of the Dominion of Newfoundland, as it was then called, uh, as against uh, part of Canada. It was against Canada. People seem to think it was a fight against Quebec, but it was a fight against Canada, legally speaking. So uh, I suppose you can also make the case, Yvonne, that the people of Newfoundland really wanted uh, Labrador to be part of this uh, nation, this uh, Dominion, now province. Or do you read that as... Look, they're trying to steal our colony from us. we got to f- stop them. Well, I don't look at it either way. What I look at it is this. Yeah, they made a petition to the Privy Council of England. Mm-hmm. Uh, they did uh, have some dispute with Quebec over ownership in the early days. But when they were granted Labrador, what did they do, Bill? As soon as this province ran into financial difficulty, what was the one thing they tried to do to bail themselves out? Sell. So. Sell Labrador. I thought it was a hundred million. I thought it was a. I thought it was a, a so many dollars for every hundred and ten square miles of Labrador. But You're it saying was, it was it only was, sixty-five million. It was, but there was three times they yeah. tried to sell us three times. Oh my God, I've forgotten at, that. At yes, three, right. Yes, at sir. three different prices. Yeah, gotcha. You know, Ed Roberts. I tell you, he's he's pretty well written a book on this. Yeah, you he's, know, in terms of that history and um, and uh, the chapters and how it unfolded. But, you know, I mean, the, the thing is, is that three times they tried to sell us. And mm-hmm. that is what my grandfather lived through. That was yeah. what his father lived through. That was what was passed to people like myself today that are the generation of Labradorians mm-hmm. that are trying to make things happen. I'm not looking to pick a fight here. All I'm looking to say is, listen, is this how you really view us? Okay, and listen, you know, and if if it is, well, I guess that's how you view us. But if it's not, and you spoke at a turn, well, I think you need to clarify your comments. Okay, well, we certainly would welcome that. Listen, we're, we we're going to news at the top of the hour, but I do want to get your position on this, and I really, I really appreciate your points today, and I, I'm glad you mentioned Ed Roberts, because Ed Roberts needs to write a book on that subject, uh, because oh, of his, yes, he because should. of his he, knowledge, he, yes. He's got the, so much research done, he's talked about it in a number of columns yeah. that he's written, and no doubt, if there's one person who could write the book right now, yeah. uh, the history of, of Labrador and how things unfolded within the province, it would be him. Okay, now one qu- final question, is Quebec up there, in your view, is Quebec up there jump, jumping up and down in glee and rubbing its hands and saying, oh great, is good, the crowd down there at each other's throats in Newfoundland and Labrador, taking away from the core issue at hand and namely that uh, the issue that uh, Quebec is trying to stop the development of the Muskrat Falls. And good, we've set them at each other's throats on issues that are not, not even relevant. How do you react to that? Well, first of all, um, Quebec has no uh, domain or territorial claims on Labrador at all. And uh, they need to get that message very, very clear. No matter what squabbling goes on between attitudes and mentality in Newfoundland and Labrador has no reflection on our relationship uh, with Quebec. Furthermore, what they're proposing today in the court is nothing but a farce. Mm. Quebec will get nowhere with this claim. That's my prediction. Um, but what will it cost us? It will cost us a great deal of money because it will, uh, we will have to fight this court uh, case in court. We have no other choice. Secondly, it could potentially cause delays within the project uh, because how will, how will it affect how they raise money, the investment capital, uh, you know, they have to go to the markets. You know, will this court case have an impact in terms of delaying things for a period of time? 
So that's where my concern is today. Am I concerned that Quebec actually has any real jurisdiction in, in terms of what they claim? Absolutely not. Okay. And and I think that um, what Quebec is doing today is playing pure politics. They waited for the opportune time when when other pieces of the project were now ready to move forward. Things were starting to happen, and uh, they used this particular time to come forward and do what they're doing because now is when, I guess, the province is getting ready to go to the financial markets. Mm. Yvonne Jones, always a pleasure to talk to you. Let me say this. I've congratulated you before on your election to the House of Commons. I'm going to predict you're going to set them on their heads up there. I mean, you, the Liberal Party really has a, a real asset in you as a member and as an MP uh, because you're so forthright in your opinion. Opinions, no nonsense, no uh, foolishness. Go for it, and uh, that, the Liberal Party is going to really benefit from that in the next election. That's my prediction. Let's see what uh, turns out. But thank you very much for your forthright opinions today. All right. Well, thank you, Bill. And next week, I would like to talk about the Nova Scotia piece. Yes. I, I had not had an opportunity to uh, speak to you about it, but you know they've made a decision, and that decision itself could have tremendous implications for Labrador yeah. uh, from an industrial uh. perspective. And, we, and that concerns me, and I, I would like the opportunity to talk. Oh, absolutely. Give us a call early next week at your uh, convenience, and we'll devote a, a full period of time to that important topic. Thank you very much, very much, Ms. Jones. Nice talking to you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yvonne Jones, MP for Labrador. And uh, I tell you, uh, she must have been a startling appearance to the uh, caucus, the Liberal caucus up there with her attitudes, her, we use the word feistiness, but that doesn't cover it, but um, the straightforward, direct, frank opinions on things that pull no punches. And that's a refreshing change for many politicians in Ottawa.